So the players are just about ready to come out on court. And this is the first match. Men's doubles quarter-final. Ku Kian Kiat and Tan Byun Hyong, the number four seeds, taking on their nemesis, the Koreans who always see to beat them, Ko and Yu, the number five seeds. So let's get ready for the player, shall we, who will be announced by the PA announcer, Andrew Nikius. Ladies and gentlemen, could you please welcome onto court the players for our opening men's doubles match from Korea, Ko Sung Hyung and Yu Yong Seong, and their opponents from Malaysia, Kien Kit Ku. You please welcome from Malaysia, Kien Kit Ku and Boon Hyong Tan. Well, they're such an exciting pair. Ku Kien Kiat and Tan Boon Hyong. They flirted with danger in round two, but here they are, the runners up from 2007 in the quarterfinals. But they're up against a tough task today. Ku Sung Hyun and Yu Yon Seong, their uh, nemesis, as I say. They've never beaten them. They played them four times in the last year. A warm welcome aboard then for day five of these World Championships. I'm Richard Kaufman, and I'm in the company right now of former world number one in the women's doubles, the mixed doubles, twice a bronze medalist at these championships, Jill Clark. It's uh, you know, still a line up throughout the day, and this first match is a mouth watering prospect in itself. Yes, it certainly is, because uh, as far as the Malaysians are concerned, there's huge expectation and pressure from the fans and media back home in Malaysia that Malaysia should win their first ever World Championship gold medal. And uh, of course, with them being silver medalists a year ago, bronze medalists two years ago. You know, it's uh, a steady improvement. Can they keep that going to go one better than 12 months ago in Paris? Well, it's going to be a very exciting match. I know that. Very dynamic, exciting pairs. Well, this matchup, this quarterfinal matchup, was being very much spoken about ahead of the tournament itself. Obviously, there was a chance that one of them might lose their way to the quarterfinals. But as you can see, world ranking of number four. They uh, had a little bit of a title drought. They were in great form, but went 16 months without a title before they won the Malaysian Open Grand Prix earlier on this year. And uh, as Jill said, a lot of pressure back home on them. And of course, Lee Chong Wei to break this golden medal drought at the World Championships. But if there's one pair they really didn't want to meet in the draw on the way to a possible final, it's the Korean pair that they're facing here this morning in Wembley. Yes, that's right. I mean, the head-to-head -head, uh, match-up between these two pairs, very much in favour of these Koreans. Go Sung Hyung, the 24-year-old on the left, as we look at them. His partner, Yoo Young Sung, is going to turn 25 a week today. So, a very good pair, as you can see. The number four and five pairs in the world rankings. And as far as uh, Ko Sung Hyung is concerned, he knows about these big match occasions because 12 months ago, he won a bronze medal in the mixed doubles playing with Ha Jung Un. They only formed their partnership a couple of years ago at the Asian Badminton Championships, these two Koreans, and actually reached the final. I mean, what a way to start a partnership. Absolutely superb. Well, it's... Uh First umpiring duties of the day go to Ivanka Pocorini. And there's Ivo Casso of Switzerland, who is our service judge. So just to see how they got there, round two, as I say, Ku and Tan flirted with danger against Liu and Chia China. 
won the first set 21-6, but lost the second 22-10 before coming through 21-15 at the end. But they beat Chen and Lin of Chinese Taipei yesterday, very comfortably indeed in round three. As for their opponents, well, they came through a very tough match in the second round against the English pair of Adcock and Ellis. Of course, Adcock on later in the mixed doubles. They lost the first set 21-18, but hit back yesterday in round three, much more comfortable against Cho and Yi Gu. So a fascinating clash, these Koreans with that superb record against this Malaysian pair winning all four matches against them all in the last year at the 2010 Swiss Open, the Singapore Open, the China Open at this year's Super Series Masters Finals. Ko said at the start of the week he wanted to reach the semi-finals of this World Championship, but Ku's also been speaking about the fact that they've been analysing the Koreans' games when they're in the bath in the build-up to these World Championships. And Tan thinks that they've maybe sorted out a method of finally beating them. We'll see what happens in the course of this possible three-set match in this quarter-final. It's interesting, so, so far, that the Malaysian pair have, in their four previous matches, have only won one game. Won no matches, but only taken one game. So, uh, obviously, their styles of play, the Malaysians, for some reason, struggle with the Koreans. Roxy Maniki, former world and Olympic champion in the men's doubles, used to play for Indonesia, but now coaching in Malaysia. There's a few Manikis around, isn't there, <laughs> in various camps of the coaching the brothers. Well, this should be a fascinating match where, of course, the fact that Kuki and Kiat and Tam Bin Hyung made the final last year, you'd think maybe they're favourites, but given the records between these four players, you have to say it's the number five seeds who will come here with the greater confidence and will be slight favourites. This match. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Kian Kit Ko, Bung Hyong Tan, Malaysia. <laughs> and on my left, Ko Sung Tan, Yu Yan Sung, Korea. <laughs> Kian Kit Ko to serve to Ko Sung Hyun. Level play. Well, this is the day where medals are won for the final stage. Place in the semi finals guarantees a bronze. Whoa. And into no. the net from Kuki and Kiat. One love. Given their previous record, given that statistic of four matches, four wins for the Koreans, important that the Malaysian pair start well here, Jill. Yes, it's absolutely imperative. And, um, it's going to be interesting. You know, you were saying how they've been studying videos of the Koreans. It's going to be interesting to me to see if they really change their tactics. They're a very explosive pair of the Malaysians and have a very much favoured formation. They like to have the tall left-hander, Tan Boon Hyong, thundering down the smashes from the back of the court, and Ku Kian Kiat usually tries to come forward as much as possible. He's very, very active at the front of the court, likes to try and intercept. I suspect that if they are to win this, they've got to mix up their pace of shot a lot more than they usually do. They love playing the fast exchanges, the Malaysians. And I'm not sure that that's the right tactics against another pair that loves to play at 100 miles an hour. Three, four. Well, one thing that they've found hard, uh, Tam was saying in the build-up to this match, was they've found it difficult to break the control at the front of the court from the Korean pair. So that's something, obviously, tactically they have been looking at as well.
That's clever. front of the court dominating for that point just to so emphasize the point three four. yeah both the korean players physically so strong wonderful defenses thank you jim the korean Five. coach the service over four three Placement finds the line. Five, this is the sort of thing, don't be afraid to give it a little more height to get it over the Koreans at the back of the court. If they can couple that with a few soft blocks at the front. Oh, no. oh, oh. Service over for five. Control of this net area is so important in doubles. Five all. Interesting that he's trying a block on the defence and immediately moving forward. Yeah, that's a pretty good tactic. Oh. So it's over six. Five. And a very even start to this opening quarter final here on day five at Wembley. Oh, oh. Ah, that's a great play. Yu oh. Young Sun, absolutely dominant at the front. So we sold that. It's all very well knowing what the oh. problem is. It's difficulties in trying to solve it. Oh. Unbelievable. Oh, it's just wide. Just wide. It wasn't by much. Seven. Six. Finding an angle out of nothing. Crikey, that was close, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure whether I actually did catch the line. Given out, though. the sort of change in pace that I was suggesting could Service probably over. bring them success. Oh. He's so well known for his power smash that, of course, oh. opponents stay back in their defensive stance when the shuttle's in the air expecting him to smash and therefore the drop becomes very effective. Oh. 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 So you straight back on A the attack. Seven. Doubles can be such an explosive game. As we're seeing here. That's good. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and look at his opponents there from Kuki and Kia. As if to say, take that. He's a flamboyant character. Service over. A bit of an extrovert, a and uh, he oh. loves to produce winners like that. Got a new hairstyle for this week as well. Because he wants to make badminton a little bit hip. Eight. 
Total to miss him. Yeah, it didn't come over, but the young son was ready and waiting. Just wide. Oh, nine, ten. Heart in mouth moment, isn't it, when you're watching the shuttle go back like that? Will it drop in or not? Slight advantage then heading into the first interval. Thanks to that winner from Yu Yonsiong. 11 9 they lead. One victory this year for this Korean pair that came at the Swiss Open Grand Prix gold. <laughs> They actually won that for the second consecutive year and beat their teammates in the final of more fancy pair of the We're saying they want to win uh, the first Malaysian gold at the World Championships. They were the uh, first Malaysian pair in 36 years to win gold at the Asian Games were Kuantan. Oh, that was a wonderful performance. It was only their second ever tournament together. A defensive shot from Tan Boon Gronk. Well, I said I'd be looking to see whether they really had changed their tactics from their normal style of play. And already we're seeing a number of cross court blocks on their defensive play. Normally very happy just to continue lifting, but they realize that the power and attacking qualities of the Koreans simply can't afford to do that. Service over, 12, 10. As you say, Tan can be so explosive at the back of the court. Service over, 11-12. Set up the winner for Koo. 268. Yeah, he has served the, uh, hit the fastest smash of the week, hasn't he? Tan, 285. work from the Koreans. Yeah. Hanging in on this point though. Oh. And they end up taking it. Oh. Oh, that was a missed opportunity from Kuki and Kiat. Service over. 
very, very clever play. So still very much finely poised in this opening game. going to need a bit of attention. Okay, there, nearest our picture. Last uh, couple of events actually teamed up with Jung Jae Sung, who's one of the big stars, of course, in Korean badminton. Lee Young Day, I think. Yeah, sorry, check that with uh, Lee Young Day, who is obviously playing with Jung Jae Sung yeah. later on today. A lot of speculation that they might be joining up together, but Ko was saying that it was purely just for fun. And he uh, gained a lot of confidence from, from playing with Lee. Yes, I was actually talking to one of the Korean coaches just before play started today, and I strongly suspect from what he was telling me that after the London 2012 Olympic Games that Ko and uh, Lee Yong Day will probably team up together. Because they're very similar, aren't they, in terms of the star attraction in, in Korea? I suppose to put them together would kind of make sense. Yeah. So more than a bit of fun, then? I suspect so. <laughs> it's always fun when you're winning, because they did win both events, didn't they? They did. But it, it, there is a very serious side to that, because, you know, the Koreans feel that Ko Sung Kyu, at times, in pressure situations, gets very, very nervous. So they've put him for a couple of tournaments with Lee Yong Day. Lee Yong Day, of course, is the Olympic mixed doubles champion, and he has gained confidence from that experience, those two tournament victories, and that will help him deal with pressure situations better. So there's, there's, it wasn't just fun, there was some very serious thinking behind it, and very clever thinking. Korean pair here always just have, seem to have a slight edge in this opening game. Only one point between them. 15, Slicing across the feathers. This is the one that brings it down so steeply. Tan Bing Hyung not stepping forward, just leaning towards the shot. Got to move your feet. on that. 18, Straight through the middle from Ko. Three points from taping the opening set here for Ko and Yu. Yeah, exactly the right moment. The Koreans have really piled on the pressure. They're really, really hunting the shuttle. Desperate to take it as early as possible. That's clever. Oh, goodness, what is that? Well, one way to bring up the game points. Game point. Piku, this is wrong choice of shot. Cannot be playing a block from that deep in court. 
So you're saying he should have been playing it a lot deeper. Yeah, he, he, was, he, he was back in court and he was taking it late, he was taking it low. You, if you're going to block to the net, you've got to be taking the shuttle early. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, he was not going to get to the second one, and they have saved two game points so far. Three more to go, though, for Kuhn Tan. Save us game Yeah, you might have got the first, you, but you're not going to get the next. Take that. Thank you. Just 252 this time from Tan. Service is so 30 kilometers per hour down and he's his fastest. It's wide and it's the first game. To go some German Julian Sion. And once again, it's the Korean pair who have the Indian sign over these Malaysians. They always had the edge, didn't they? And in the end, they prevail with the opening game 21 points to 17. So, in terms of and Tan now, that's the demoralizing aspect now of dropping the opening set. It's going to be a very difficult situation now for them to retrieve. Yes, it is, because as much as, uh, you know, the coaches will be, uh, have told them not to uh, worry about previous encounters, that this is a different match, different situation. You know, you said right at the start of the match, Richard, that uh, you know, it was one thing knowing what tactics to use. It's a completely different thing actually implementing those tactics. And they just haven't been able to do that so far. Not often enough, anyway. Well, a place in the semi-finals up for grabs here. The winners of this match will meet either Mohamed Arsan, Bona Septano, or the Danish number two seeds of Matthias Bo and Karsten Mogensen. Court one, 20 seconds. Court one, 20 seconds. Ku Kian Kiat has got a draw on all his experience. He's the more senior of the two Malaysians. Four World Championship Second medals game. he's got. Love all. Silver and three balls. He's two years older, exactly. They share the same birthday. Oh, oh. my goodness. Got him there on his knees and you accepts the... Uh, the point in the end, but that was about Ko Son Kyun and his ability to retrieve what seemed an impossible situation. One love. Great agility, wasn't it? Yeah, and he's so physically strong. You know, even while he was down on his knees, he's still able to play another shot. Over. One. I said right towards the end of that Four. opening game that the Koreans were really hunting the shuttle, desperately trying to take it early. I think the Malaysians need to try and do a similar sort of thing. At the moment, I feel that uh, um, they're not really moving quickly enough towards the shuttle. So when I say I want to see them pick up the pace, I'm not talking about them hitting the shuttle harder. Service Far from over. it. What I'm wanting to see One. is their quicker footwork movement to the shuttle so they can take it earlier and then they've got more options. He 
you see, look, look at that defensive shot. You know, I know he had Three, to turn to play it on his one. forehand side, Tan Boon Hyong, but he's letting the shuttle come to him. It's, it, it had actually gone past him. We really need the Malaysians, if they want to get through this, they really have to start moving towards the shuttle and taking the shuttle high. Third as well from Kuki and Cat. Just got it out of his body, didn't it? This one could go on forever. And then the Koreans attack. Big point. And it's uh, looking a little desperate right now for the Malaysian pet. Ko and Yu are bang on form. It's a Four, great smash. One. But look how early then at the net Ko Sung Hyung takes the shuttle. And they're queuing up for that one to finish it off. Hit and move. You can really see the contrast between these two pairs. Uh, Malaysia concern here. Five, four. Yeah, I know I'm repeating myself, but Tam was taking it late in his forehand corner. We know he's a great athlete. He needs to be leaping in the air and creating Seven. angles. Well, that's twice in two rallies that the Malaysians have said they're not really. And is this all this? Is this all done on purpose, Jill? Is this all? Are they part of uh, trying to unsettle a little bit the Koreans? Because at the moment, their badminton's not unsettling them. No, that that's true. Um, I find it odd, though, that the umpire had a word with the Koreans and said, you know, uh, almost telling them off. In other words, to wait rather than, yeah. rather than the Malaysians be ready. Yeah. But nothing's putting them off right now. Six. Nothing seems to be One. knocking them out of their stride. And after taking the opening game they are opening up a nice little gap at the start of the second 6-1 now they lead Seven, one. six Just points in a row watch Coe's feet here lunging out wide taking it at the side he's not moving forward if you're the net player you've got to have a lot of movement off the shuttle so your your body movement is going forward towards the net as you're trying to play the shot I think that 
two and ten of one. shots in that last rally and that's why he's he's breathing heavily because on the whole it's been these Malaysian two here on the defensive trying to deal with the, the variety of shots of power and touch that are coming to them from Ko and Yu. Yeah, more physically demanding Ko to be hitting the shuttle down, working from the back of the court, the smashing, the drops, the movement at the back of the court. Basically the two Malaysians were standing side by side in the defensive stance position and just lifting the shuttle. That's good. good work, good rally. Look at the difference, moving towards the shuttle, going towards Four. the net put so much more pressure on your opponents. Well, it's a uh, make or break time really, isn't it, for Kua Tan now that staring defeat in the face. Service over. Use of the mid-court area in doubles. Four. Push it past the net player. Shuttle still landing in front of the rear court player. Ideal shot. Just not been able to stamp their authority on either the opening game or this game. Ku and Tan. Ooh, 270. Fastest of the match. It's 168 miles per hour. And there's a I feel like a demoralized feeling now between Ku and Tan. Given the previous in the last year. About the necessity to start well, and they haven't. Hey! That will help them. Service over six, ten. from the interval. Surprising that the umpires allowed them to have a, a towel down. When I say one point from the interval, one Co and you are one point from the from the interval. Obviously eleven points required. So potentially maybe just one more point, so six ten play. And it is just one point. Well, backs against the wall now for Ku and Tan, because Ko and Yu here are flying, taking that opening game. 11-6 up now in the second. Really doesn't seem Jill to be any way back. Well, it is possible, but, uh, you know, the way that the Malaysians are playing, you know, I, I find it at times bewildering because 
I love watching them play. I, I have high regard for the Malaysians. They're a dynamic, exciting pair. But we just really haven't seen that today, have no, we? It's, no all, dynamic, it's, it, it's as if they don't believe they can break down their defence, the very solid defence of their opponents. And it's almost as if, you know, they've sort of said to themselves, well, you know, how are we going to win this? Instead of... I, I thought there were signs in the opening game that they were changing their tactics, doing something a little different. But they've reverted back in the early stages of this second game. How many times have we seen them just lift, lift, lift? We've seen a couple of really long rallies. They're not going to win this match by defending. They have to go out there. They have to start winning points, making it happen. Because they can be so flamboyant. They are at the best when they are on the attack. Absolutely. A lot of credit, of course, has to come to their opponents. Oh, it's uh, been a fabulous display, hasn't it, from Ko and Yu? Well, that slightly fortunate shot. Well, it was a miss hit there from Ko Sang Hung. Sometimes when it's your day, everything goes your way. So last year's finalists in danger of exiting at the quarter-final stage here. Yeah. Helped by the shuttle being deflected by the net cord. Seven, we have the possibility, of course, that there could be an all-Japanese final. Korean. I mean, sorry, Korean final. Yeah, yes, absolutely. yeah. Oh, look at that. Well, the defence of Kukian Kiat. Look at this, he's taking it late. And again, there was no need to take it that late on that second defensive shot. Well, they're romping home at the moment. Service over. And a coup down 30. in the dumps. That will help. But you need more than a bit of luck. That's wide. Service over for team A. I may be sounding a bit harsh, you know, but it, it's the Malaysians just don't seem to have the belief today. They don't seem to believe that they really can win this. And it's such a shame because I was so looking forward to this encounter. I thought this could be a thriller. But again, you know, the defensive play there from Tan. He's almost back at the double service line as he's defending that. That smash. But you've got to give credit to the Koreans. They've been absolutely superb so far. No, they have. They have. But it, it's almost as if, the, you know, all that focus that they've done, all the video watching the Malaysians, it's, it's almost as if they've got two wrapped up in it all and they've come out on court and, uh, and, and have tightened up instead of being their normal loose self. Nine. They've been over-anxious by it all. I mean, I heard... Uh, Kuki and Kiat saying, you know, it's great, we're in the quarterfinals, we've got to where we want to be, you know, is trying to take the pressure off himself. But I think that took really does belie actually the way they were feeling, which was, from what we've seen, very tense about the prospect of taking on a pair that have beaten four times within 12 months. And it looks yeah. like it's going to be five times. You must have had a Jill, where you played in the doubles before mixed or women's doubles, where you, you know there's a pair out there, we've got them. And that's the feeling that Co and you have got right now. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you get a huge amount of confidence from having victories over a different pair. But, you know, I also like to go on to court, and, you know, uh, in my day, there was some very, very strong Chinese pairs. And 
I'd say to myself, OK, well, I may have lost to them four times, but today's going to be my day. So I'm going to beat them eventually. I know how yeah. I'm going to do it. And you go on with a very positive mindset. Now, I'm not saying that Malaysians haven't had a positive mindset, but so that so mindset that, that may have been positive to start with appears to have deserted them now. And it went quite quickly, didn't it, during the middle of the first game? A little too quickly yeah. for, for my liking, because the Malaysians are a great pair, but we just haven't seen it today. Gold medal winners at the Commonwealth Games. Now staring at an exit here, unless they can make a miracle comeback. And then that shot into the net from Koo makes that even more unlikely. Three more points required then for Koo and Yu. Certainly help the Malaysian pause. Service over 12, 18. Oh. 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 Service over 19, 12. That is brilliant. What a shot. And pretty apt that it brings up match points. Look how early he takes that. Jumping out to the side, the thoroughly deserves the game points. Well, still seven more match points here for Cohen Yu. A comprehensive victory. Ko Sun Kyun and Yu Yun Xiong sail into the semi finals of the World Championships. And once again, Ku Kim Kyat and Tam Bun Kyung just don't have the answers to this Korean pair. Last year's finalists are out. And it's a guaranteed bronze at least for Ko and Yu. Yeah, they were very, very impressive today, Ko and Yu took the shuttle early, hunted it, so solid in their defensive play. And the Malaysians really did uh, not look at their best today. Well, it was a pretty one-sided affair. Ko Sung Hyun and Yu Yun Song into the semis. 21-17, 21-13 the score. Well, they'll be absolutely delighted. And as I say, possibility of meeting their fellow Koreans at Jung and Lee in the final, if all would go to plan. That's a long way to go. What is for sure is they're through to the semi-finals and they'll meet the winner of the Asan Septano from uh, Indonesia, Bo Mogensen of Denmark Clash, which is later on today on Court 1.